My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'll do my friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job, not just entertainment, but context, teach, educate. Call 1-800-743-CBC to tweet at you, Kramer. Everybody knows the ascent of the mega caps, right? The nation state companies, I call them, has created an insane disparity between the trillionaire companies and the peons. Of course, the trainers have earned their gigantic market capitalizations because of explosive earnings, not just what's known as multiple expansion, meaning people paying more for the same numbers over and over again until the stocks in question collapse under their own weight. The mega caps certainly define the market on a daily basis, right? I mean, the Dow advanced 49 points. They estimate inch 0.06%. NASDAQ shed 0.24%. I know they're one of the key reasons why the S&P 500 is knocking on the door of an amazing milestone, which is the S&P 5000. Didn't get there. But we're not passive observers here on Mad Money, right? This is a teaching show, not a history lesson on how Apple or NVIDIA or Microsoft got here. We're certainly not going to say, hey, forget this market. You missed it. I hear a lot of people saying that, or it's broken. Okay, fine. Frankly, I still actually like the mega caps on any pullback. Like, you just got an apple where my attitude remains. Own it. Don't trade it. Every day, the stock market can give you opportunities to make good money, perhaps much more than you'd make by parking your cash in certificates of deposit, which on days like today or in the last, actually the whole year, feels like a velvet prison for your money. You can get 5% risk-free for doing nothing. All right, I'm not going to denigrate that. Hey, but how about this? Arm Holdings this morning rallied nearly 48% in the wake of a tremendous quarter, one we actually totally saw coming. Arm Semiconductor Designs can be found in pretty much every kind of device, especially smartphones, and they've got a great partnership with, yes, NVIDIA. Today, the stock soared like it caught a takeover bid because the quarter was just so good, not to mention because the darn thing was way too cheap going into what we call the print. This company's at the nexus of smart cars and Internet of Things, most sophisticated cell phones, the data center, generative AI. More on that later in the show when we take a deep dive into ARM's quarter and explain to you what to do if you owned it after today's move. You might think ARM's extremely rare. You know, extreme, it was, it was. It was a one-off kind of thing. And, and it is extraordinary. But you know what? There happens to be another characteristic to this market that doesn't get enough airtime. I'm going to change that right now. The almost instant percentage gains you can get every day from companies. I'm not just talking about the huge winners like Eli Lilly or Amazon. These days, there are so many solid gains. I don't let's say 10% or more created daily around here. It's pretty astounding in itself. I ran a screen of the SP 1500 to see how many stocks have given you a big gain, 10% gain, just since Tuesday's close. You know, I've got 28 names. Why does this matter? Because even if you take profits on that 10% gain and pay the taxes, you're going to beat what you'd be earning from an entire year of leaving your cash on the so-called fantastic sidelines. I do not want to denigrate anything that can give you a sizable risk-free return, which is what you're getting. But can we at least admit that you might be missing out on some huge gains if you just steer clear of the, of the stock market? Let's go over some of them, okay? Some of the notable gains from this small sample. So you can see how broad the rally really is, despite what you may hear in the uh, press, the chattering heads, whatever. First, you, you have this uh, Regenix Bio, which is a drug company which revealed that it might have something against Duchenne muscular dystrophy. That's a terrible disease, very rare, meaning they can charge very high prices for any treatment. That stock bolted nearly 25% over two days in response to the news. Second, 20% gain, XPO. A trucker of all things. It's been able to expand, take advantage of the bankruptcy of competitor, yellow, and has a terrific increase in cargo per truck year over year. The trigger leading to the monster move, a much better than expected quarter. Then Cirrus Logic, up 19%. Now, Cirrus Logic is responsible for the sound in your iPhone. Okay, right here. And much of the chagrin of the Apple Bears, these guys reported an astounding quarter thanks to Apple cell phone orders. Next, Alfred, I didn't know, advanced drainage systems. This up nearly 18%. Infrastructure play, and there's so much infrastructure activity in this country right now that you'll have a hard time not making money in the sector. After that, get this, it's Ralph Lauren, the classic of power play, which rallied nearly 17% today on an awesome quarter, with great sales including lots of business in China. That's a stupendous gain, one that we've been saying should have happened after the last quarter. That was a great one, but it happened. Then there's an app called Monolithic Power. That would be looking things up in Google, and that's a gain of 16%. Chip company involved in the artificial intelligence and reported a wildly strong quarter. I want you to consider it to be riding the coattails of NVIDIA, ARM, and Broadcom. Next is Old Fave and Phase Energy, a solar power company that called the bottom on solar sales over this week, causing the stock to rally 16%, taking up SolarEdge and Genrac along with it. 
It's not Silicon Labs, Slab, we used to call it, a nuts and bolts semiconductor company. It's up 16%. Want to shoot the lights out, quarter? Next biggest winner, Outfit. Didn't know? Quinn Street, insurance marketing specialist, jumped 14.5% on a spectacular quarter. And rounding it all out is Sonos, up 10.5%. Makes sophisticated sound systems for your home, and it's part of a large cohort of home improvement stocks that are working. And here I'm thinking about companies like Trex that just reported a good quarter. By the way, ASEC did the other day, Masco, the cabinet specialist. Hey, don't they, doesn't he say that we should be buying the stock of Home Depot? Now, if all those are too obscure, how about this? Let's, let's talk larger names. Walt Disney jumped 11.5% today on a terrific turnaround quarter, fueled by the dividend boost, $3 billion buyback, excellent cost cutting. We want this company to keep delivering like that for the Chapel Trust after years of underperformance that have really hurt me. Win Resorts, another Chapel Trust name, vaulted 6.3% today alone as its return to hyper growth move in both Vegas and in Macau is finally happening. Numbers were so amazing that we added to our position for the Chapel Trust, telling club members in the morning meeting that Win's business is much better now uh, at this point than it was substantially higher a few years ago. Another club name, Palo Alto Networks, rallied again, up 7.5% since last Tuesday. And, you know, at this long-term holding, jumps every time any other company in the cybersecurity cohort moves up. This time it was Fortinet, not a great company. What does this list tell you about this market? It's simple. We didn't get to these new highs just through the mega caps. We got here through moves like the ones we just talked about since last Tuesday. All this might be happening because the market remains a scorned animal, a lowly skunk in a 5% CD block party. All I ask is that at least you consider participating in stocks. Bottom line, there's just too much money being made in excess of what you can get from CDs, even after taxes. And stocks like these are the 10% solution to those passive risk-free gains. Except those rallies happened overnight. The risk-free 5% takes an entire year with zero possibilities of any additional upside. Let's take calls. Let's go to Tony in Florida. Tony. Hey, Jim, I just want to give your team a booyah. I know we keep on saying it, but you do have one of the best teams there. The team is great. What I often do, I was, I was with the guys last night, with a whole bunch of us go out for our birthdays. And I was just saying, like, the team makes it so I can keep working. The team. So thank you for recognizing that. Let's go. Especially. Yeah, um, this stock, um, I have some Eli Lilly, but um, I wanted another uh, healthcare stock to go with it. And basically, it kept me and my wife out of the hospital because we did get COVID once. And um, it's so low, and I saw the interview you had with him. And if he's going to try and beat cancer, what do you think about me starting a position in Pfizer? Okay, Pfizer is really interesting. You, just, you, pay, you get paid 6% to wait to see how good CGen is. And CGen's got uh, some, near, some near miraculous possibilities for some of the worst cancers in the world. So I am with Dr. Boyle. I'll take the 6% and see what CGen gets me. All right. There's just too much money being made in excess of what you can get from CDs. And stocks like these are the, are the solution, frankly, to just getting the passive risk-free gains that have no more upside other than what you buy from the beginning. On well, Money Tonight, GE Healthcare had a healthy profit forecast for 2024, which has piqued my interest. And I'm hearing more about what's working for the Chapel Trust name. Let's sit down with the CEO. Then that big moving arm that I mentioned, that was a thing of beauty, wasn't it? But does the long-term opportunity remain after today's huge jump higher? I'll give you my take. And then Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Let's talk about Pfizer. How about Vertex? It fell after earnings earlier this week. So are investors getting a buying opportunity in the biotech name, which has been the case every time it's fallen? I'm going to sit down with the CEO and get the latest. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.